Harry Cornick, um, pleasure for you to join us here at Sky Sports. Um, I think probably my first question to you is, I just, I think it's so polite, you have to ask in these times. How are you, mate? How is, how is everything? How are you doing? I know you're a positive person, but these are unprecedented times, man. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm okay. Uh, just getting on by, uh, back to training now. So it's, it's a lot better than what it was a few weeks ago. So now I'm happy to be back training. Um, I'm just excited, really, for to play some football, to play some games. I've been missing it so much. So excited, really. That's how I feel at the minute. I mean, try and give us the insight into a, into a footballer's mindset. I mean, we all missed the game from the broadcasting, from the fans, from everything else perspective. But you must have the itchy feeling, or had the itchy feeling every day leading up to the return of action. Man. How, how does it feel now you're actually back? Yes, it's, it's been a long process. It's been a long process because, I think mainly because no one really knew what was going to happen. No one knew what, what, what we were going to be doing in a few weeks. We didn't know if the season was going to be finished. We didn't know whether we were playing another game until the 2021 season really so we didn't know so to know that I've got a game this weekend coming up it's exciting it's good I mean my football fix has been a bit cured with watching a bit of Bundesliga and watching what you can I've watched the Premier League years about 12 times I think I've watched the 0405 season about 10 times on, on Sky Sports so so it's been I've been watching and doing what I can but to actually be able to play a game is it's going to be exciting it's going to be fun you know what's so funny every time I speak to any of the ballers, they turn around and tell me straight away. There was the itch to get back, but then yeah. there was also the fear of the fact, oh my gosh, it feels like we're about to go to pre-season day one oh. again. So, <laughs> now, I remember the first day you guys went back and it felt like it was the hottest day of the year. Oh, it's horrible. It's tell horrible. Me what, what that has felt like. Has it actually felt like another pre-season for you? Yeah, it sort of has because everyone was so excited when they, when they said, oh, your first day back's this Friday coming and everyone's like, yes, back to training. And then we sort of got there and we just thought, hold on a second, it's pre-season testing. We're, we're going to be running. We're, we're doing tests, we're doing runs. Like, it was horrible, but I mean, it was just nice to get back in there and see the lads. But yeah, the sessions have been, have been tough doing a bit of running, but it's, it's, it's a tough one because we've got so many games coming up in a short space of time mm -hmm. that we can't do too much because then we'll just blow up after about three games. So it's, it's been a tough few weeks, but it's been enjoyable. How was that fear? Because, because the tight fixture congestion, the building back up on, onto your body sort of the physical wise, ha has it been difficult to kind of know when to peak or to know how to sort of judge your fitness to try and get yourself back into peak condition? I think that that's, it's, been, it's been tough to, to, to try and figure out in your heads, but obviously the, the sports scientists at the club, they, they do all of that for you. So mm -hmm. they'll measure your distance, their, your high speed during the week. So they know when to tape you off or to try and increase your load. Um, obviously, it's, it's one game this Saturday, then a week rest, and then into the midweek games, which are going to be carnage, really, to put it <laughs> put it bluntly. But it, it's going to be tough to to, to play nine games. Um, but that's what squads for. There, there's a lot of players um, who are going to be in and out. You can't expect to start every game and play nine minutes every game because it's just not physically possible. So everyone's got to be ready to play their part, which I think is going to be the main thing in the running. I think looking at your season as well, I think individually you've had a very fantastic year. You've adapted very well to the championship. Um, you've kind of seen yourself probably the own, developing your own game. How do you kind of look at the way you perform this year? Have you been happy with your development? Um, yeah, I think I've done okay. I think, I think the main thing to add to my game was goals and I've scored a few goals this year. I've been playing quite well. So the, the whole thing didn't really come at a great time for me because I thought I was having my best season yet. But um, obviously the safety of people comes first and it was the right decision to do. So I think I've just got to hit the ground running and, and look at it as like a, a nine-game mini-season. I think that's the best way we, we can look at it as a club as well, that we've got nine games to try and get as many points to stay in the league, really. So nine games, less a mini-season, let's see how, see how many points we can get. Just give me the human aspect of it now, because we can talk about the professional aspect as much as we want. But is there still the fear for you? Is there still, I mean, you've seen players talk out naturally, because COVID, we still haven't actually got any sort of diagnostic or vaccine or yeah. anything like that. Is there still the... Does that still play on your mind? Um, it, it, it's quite fearful. Um, I, I don't live with my like family from home, that, that my mum and my dad. So I don't live with anyone who's a, a high risk sort of category. So to me, I, I'm quite happy to go back and play. But if I had a child or I had like, I lived with, next to my mother or something who was older of age, then, then I would have the fear. I would be worried to, to go into work and possibility of contracting the virus. Um, but I think it, it's sort of our job to go out there and play. Some players are saying they're not going to do it. It's fair enough, really. You, you can only speak on your personal level. And for me, I'm, I'm happy to go and play. I, I've missed it. And um, I think sometimes you've got to look at it that we get paid to play football. It's, it's a privileged job. And um, it, it's time to sort of work for your money, really, and um, put that aside. But obviously, the safety of people is very important. So all the procedures have been put in and 
in our preseason game. What we've had recently, um, it's all been smooth. It's all been fine. Every training session, there's protocols in place which which make everyone safe. So the safety expert has been like managed as well as it can, which which everyone's happy about. But obviously, some players have, have put their family first, which which I completely understand. But for me, it, it's not really a problem. I have to ask you as well, just just give me the actual truth. How was the first touch when you got back as well? Because I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit rusty. Um, I think the first day we go back, we did a few passing drills, which were sort of like non-contact. So no one really got too close to each other. But then when that first keep ball came or that first run they came in, oh, it, it was tough. It was tough for some people and some people in the middle more than others. But it was fun. It was good. Um, see, the thing is, looking at the boys, looking at the way you were, just before the breakdown, you were actually in a, in a good run of form. You only lost one of your last six games. So do you try and recoup that sort of momentum that you had before or do you have that new insight now to just say, look, every game is almost like a cup final? Yes, it, it's a tough one to look at really because I feel like everyone's momentum's sort of gone now. It's, it's a whole new season. You, you look at some teams, like, they have a great season last season and they don't hit the ground running next season. So it, I think it's a good, for, good thing for us really. It's a, it's a fresh start to look at it, to, to take it game by game and and everyone's in the same boat. So say you could have won five on the bounce, that momentum's completely gone now. You start fresh. And so we've got to look at it that our first game, Preston's our first day of the season, really. I think that's how I'm going to look at that. And I've got nine games to, to score as many goals as I can personally. And for Luton, we've got nine games to get as many points as we can to stay in the division. I mean, I'm loving the mentality that Nathan Jones has come back with. He's, he's said that he had a conversation with you boys and kind of outlaid to you how many points you guys yeah. need to stay up. Can you give us a little bit of insight as to his intensity? I mean, I know he's an intense man, but give yeah. us the insight into what he's turned around and expecting from you guys. Yeah, he, he's expecting a lot. He, he came in and then on the first session, he sort of laid out. I mean, some of the lads who've been there for two, three years with him sort of know what he's about. But then we sort of gave an insight to say, look, lads, this is, this is going to be an intense few days now. Like, you need to get ready, get yourself on it sort of thing. So he's come in and he, he's implemented his philosophy back in and, and we're sort of playing his way again, which, which is nice for some of the boys. And um. And obviously, he's an intense man. I mean, you've got to be on it every day in training. If you're not, then you'll know about it because he will let you know. I mean, look, for all those that are going to watch the interview and or see the confusion and be like, Jones and Jones, I thought it was the same person. Yeah. As Graham. And now Nathan's in charge. But like, what are the differences between the two? Just give us that insight as to, because you now would have worked with yeah. both of them. I mean, for, for, for me personally, they're very great for me. I mean... I probably had my best season yet under Graham Jones. So for me personally, I've had a great season under him. And um, I was sad to see him go because I, I work quite well with him and I feel like he's improved me a lot as a player. Um, in terms of the differences, they're, they're quite similar in, in sort of styles of play, how they want to play um, and, and, and the details they want to play. They're very like detailed in what they want to see and what they want is what they want. And if you don't do it that way, they will let you know about it. Um, Nathan Jones is probably a bit more intense, a bit more hands-on. He'll let you know, he'll shout sort of thing. But, but they're similar coaches in a, re in a way that they're, they're very hands-on in, in how they want you to play and they, they get stuck in in the training session. So no, they've, they've both been good for me personally. And um, hopefully Nathan coming back in is going to be good for the squad and good for the team. And hopefully we can, we can hit the ground running. Do you remember the reverse fixture? Down at Deepdale, 2-1. Um, I do, yeah. I don't have fond memories. I remember I, I didn't start. I came, came on in the 70th minute, I think, at 1-1. And I had a one-on-one -on -one chance in, like, the 88th minute, maybe. Or, yeah. like, the 87th. And I missed it. And I thought, oh. And they went down the other end and scored. And, uh, yeah, not great memories for me that game. No. We wow. owe them one, really. See, and I like that attitude because they were incredibly impressive at home this year. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah, and no, they you were the struggles away. But at the same time, you more than matched them on that day. So do you kind of take the incentive from that from those experiences? Yeah, I mean, every every different championship club gives you a different test. They're not really too much clubs to play alike. Everyone's just so different in this league. And you've got every game changes. You can't you can't have the same tactics for every game because playing against Preston is completely different to playing against Brentford, to playing against Leeds. So we know, we know what Preston's strengths are. We know, we know how they play. And I think we managed them really well away from home. We, we sort of nullified their threats at times and, and sort of counted them really well. So we know what it's going to take to try and beat Preston. That They're a good team. They're, they're pushing for the playoffs. So I think that's a, an important thing coming into these nine games that some teams are sort of mid-table, nothing to play for. Their season's almost done or not. So coming against Preston, they're, they're going into the playoffs. They want to get some points on the board to try and Put, make a push to make the playoffs. So we need our points to stay in the league. So it's going to be a fascinating game. 
I do want to ask you then, because I'm loving the mentality that I can hear from you. There's an internal confidence that you guys really do feel like you can get some points on the board. Do you, do you believe as well the fact that you are playing the teams that surround you, the Huddersfields, the Hulls, the, uh, the Barnsleys as well? Does that give you extra incentive to say to yourself, you know what, we actually do are in control of our own fate? Yeah, I mean, we, we've got nine games and if we, if we win nine, we stay in the league. It's as simple as that. But obviously, winning nine games is going to be tough. So yeah. the, the teams around us, they're going to be important games because they're in the exact same boat as us. So we've got Barnsley at home, we've got Huddersfield away, Hull away. And sort of the home and away fixtures, that they're sort of weird now that coming to Kenilworth Road, we're sort of our fortress. Our fans were unbelievable. We always packed out. We always, they always sing their hearts out. That was a real advantage for us. So we need to try and keep kind of worth road the same as it is really it's going to be strange without no fans there but but the away games are going to be different because there's no fans there so what the atmosphere is going to be like is going to be completely different to what they've been like I, I was so excited to go to Wellham Road and play in front of the Leeds fans and it was going to be a great experience for me as a player but it's going to be sort of not as great now knowing there's no fans there but that could work in our advantage going there so we'll have to wait and see. Do you, just from a psychological perspective just give us that insight because Ask anybody, especially strikers, when they score, the first thing they want to do is celebrate for the fans. Yeah. I mean, so does it affect you at all in your psyche? I know they'll say, look, it's the same lines, it's the same goals, the same pitch that you've always played on, but it is a bit different, isn't it? It is. It's going to be completely different. I mean, we played a preseason game, and it just felt so strange them being no one there, no fans. Every pass you sort of heard the thud of the ball off the off the foot. It just sort of felt weird, and like you got a corner and. Usually when you get a corner, that all the fans are off their feet, clapping, sort of like junior you up for the corner sort of thing. So it's going to be strange. I mean, it's something I've never experienced, really. I think the closest thing would have been like under-23 development games mm. that I used to play when I used to be at Bournemouth. Like, that's going to give me a, an advantage. I'm looking at it that I've played in a lot of games where there's no fans there. It's just a competitive game between two teams with no fans. But it's going to be different. It's going to be challenging. But I have to wait and see because I've never played anything, anything really like it. Harry, what's so cool about this is... Um, I, I have some friends at Bournemouth that speak glowingly of you. I have a report of Mark McAdam yeah. that speaks glowingly of you as well. And you just have a good reputation all around. Do you know what I mean? This is oh, a good guy, uh, which I always think is good. So I want to yeah. ask you a wider question. When you see sort of the way that players are making a stance now and using their platforms, like the Black Lives Matter movement, and you're seeing yeah. the social unrest that's happening, but people really wanting to push change. I just wanted to get your perspective on it. What are you kind of seeing? In I think I think that we're in a privileged position as footballers that that when we speak, people listen. I think there's a lot of people out there that, that don't have their voice heard. I mean, I was looking today, looking at the Rashford situation, what he's been saying about the, the meals for school children, and that's literally just been passed in the last what, couple of hours or so. Mm. And I think what he's done this this lockdown has been brilliant what he's done for change and his charity work and now he's done this and he's he's sort of put in his position of football and he's using it to make the world a better place if, if you put it that way but I think we're, we've got a platform where the littlest thing we can do can make someone's day I mean I mean I, I have a go at Stu I get annoyed with him every day that he wants me to do a different video a different happy birthday message but I know that I can take 10 seconds out of my day to wish uh, a Luton fan a happy birthday and it'll make his day Mm. And to me, it's 10 seconds out of my life. That's, that's yeah. nothing to me. And it will make his day. So I look at it that we're in a privileged position. We've got to make the most of it. And we've got to put our voice. And we've also got to put other people's voices out that, that they won't get heard. So that's how I feel about it. You're a top bloke, man. It's an absolute pleasure. You live all of the hype as well, man. Absolute pleasure. Thank you Good very much. Weekend. Yeah. Thank you very much. And anything else? Look, Stu's jumping back in now. but Stu's back in. There he is. Keeping his yeah, busy. Up. No worries. Thank you very much. Uh, cheers. JD, thanks, mate. If you can right, retransfer that to me, that'd be brilliant. Yeah, I will. Um, I'll put you on the email 